So, welcome to Capital Budgeting Part 3. I'm going to contrast net present value and internal rate of return and introduce modified internal rate of return. Now, NPV and IRR both are very commonly used in business. Um, some businesses tend to prefer internal rate of return. One prime example of that would be real estate. And most every business uses net present value um, in its analysis of projects. Both of them tend to also give us the same decision. Uh, net present value, if it makes sense according to NPV criteria, it will also make sense according to IRR criteria. There are, however, a couple of exceptions. Those are, in the first case, when we have non-conventional cash flows. That's when you have, uh, well, conventional cash flow is one where the initial cash flow is negative. In other words, you pay out initially, and all other cash flows afterwards are coming in, so they're positive. A non-conventional one is where you will again run into a negative cash flow. So it's, the sign changes on the cash flow more than once. A second situation is when you have mutually exclusive projects. When you, that means you can choose one or another project, but not both. Um, under the situations where initial investments are substantially different due to the scale, sometimes you'll have different uh, decision criteria according to the two, and uh, also sometimes due to the timing of cash flows. An example with a non-conventional cash flow is the one you see here, where initially you have a typical in investment of $80,000, but then uh, after the first two years, the third year, again, shows a pay, a pay out again, so another outflow of cash. That is a situation in which you'll have more than one internal rate of return. So given that your required rate is 14%, would you accept the project or not? This is an example of a net present value profile of the project. Net present value profile is one where the vertical shows the net present value and the horizontal will show you the various, the discount rate or your cost of money. So the net present value of this project is negative, as you can see, coming across from zero to 10%. And at between 10% and 63% almost, it's a, the pro, a profit, project is profitable, after which, again, it's not profitable anymore. So in, this will show us graphically that when we have a return or required return of 14%, the net present value is positive. In fact, it's calculated out to be 2,174. So we should accept the project. But as you can see, the internal rate of return, in other words, the return on the project is quite strange, giving us a value of either 10% or 63%. Excuse the cat. So mutually exclusive projects are ones where you may choose only one of, of two or more options. So in other words, um, you have a situation where you can only choose one project or no project if none of them make sense, um, normally there's some sort of a conflict. An example uh, here is if you have a, space, a plot of land and you have the choice of making a parking lot out of it or an open air market, you can't do both. So that would be an example. Intuitively, if you use net present value, you choose the one with the higher value. If it's internal rate of return, you choose the one with the higher return. Here's an example. So project A gives you, uh, you have to invest 160,000 and then you'll receive payments or expected cash flows of zero, 20,000 and 210,000. Project B, the initial outflow is 120,000 after which you're going to receive 100,000 and 60,000 in years one and two. With a discount required rate of six and a half percent, Project A will have the higher net present value than Project B, but Project B has a higher return or internal rate of return of 20, almost 24%, whereas Project A is 13.3. So there we have a conflicting situation here. Which project should we accept? Well, the result is basically we should choose Project A because A maximizes 
the amount of present value cash. In other words, we're going to gain 31,000 in present value dollars by pursuing project A, whereas with project B, we will uh, gain less. Now you may say, well, yeah, but project A, we're investing 160,000 instead of 120,000 for B. But the answer to that is, of course, the 31,000 that we receive for project A is up and on top of 160,000 plus the required return on A, which is this 6.5%. So the extra 40,000 should not play a role because 40,000 is also receiving its return. The only time we'd actually have to worry about the uh, amount of investment is if we have an issue of capital rationing. In other, words, we, in other words, we don't have access to any amounts of cash or the required amounts of cash. This is an NPV profile for the two projects. As you can see, project A is the one with the steeper slope downwards, and project B is flatter. As you can see, coming back to the definition of internal rate of return, uh, project A has an internal rate of return here, just above 13%, whereas project B is close to 24%. Uh, the crossover rate is basically uh, the point where the two projects give us the same net present value. So in other words, at seven if our money cost is 7.94%, we would be indifferent between the two projects. In other words, we wouldn't care whether we chose A or B. Both of them would give us a pro positive value, something over 20,000, and we wouldn't mind either. But at any kind of cost of money that's less than 7.94, we would choose the red line, A, and anything more than 7.94, we would choose the green line, B. Of course, up to 24%, because after that we're losing. So net present value directly measures the increase in value. Okay, uh, so whenever there's a conflict between net present value and anything else, we would choose the net present value or prefer, prefer and uh, you go with that decision. Now we're going to show a way of calculating the return on a project when you have multiple returns. It's called a modified IRR. Using the numbers we had already, or the example we had previously, what we're going to do is we're going to gather the negative terms together and bring them to today, and we're going to gather the positive terms and bring them to the final period of time. So the net present value of the cash outflows is adds up to 183,000. It's basically it's the 80,000 and the present value of the 140,000 in year three. Now the cash inflows are these two, and we're going to gather them together in the final year of the cash inflows. So that is. We're going to have the 70,000 plus the, pre the future value of 140,000. So 140,000 times 1.095 plus 70,000. 70, now, as you can see, we're using a different rate for the cash inflows and as from the cash outflows. Uh, that's realistic. If we have a borrowing rate and a reinvestment or a lending rate, we would use those two different rates. Um, that gives us a, a realistic uh, result in terms of what is the uh, return on our project. We've now simplified it into one outflow, one inflow, and we can simply calculate the uh, rate of return for that project, and that is 10.28%. So that is the return on our project. The modified IRR therefore removes the problem of multiple returns. And given actual borrowing and reinvestment rates, it's an appropriate measure for a project return. So anyway, just recapping, we did a comparison now of the net present value and the internal rate of return and introduced the concept of a modified IRR to give you a value or a realistic answer for the return on a project which has um, non-conventional cash flows. Thank you for listening and good luck.